Okay, this is gonna be a super quick video. Here's how JavaScript inheritance works and why I don't consider it real inheritance. In JavaScript, when you have a value, whether that be an object, an array, a primitive, whatever, and you do a member access, and what I mean by that is you do a dot b, or you do a open bracket string of b, close bracket. This is a member access. It's really just a lookup into a dictionary. Objects in JavaScript can have pretty much members of any name, and if you can't use them in JavaScript because they're they're illegal identifiers, you can just pass them in as a string using the, the square brackets. Now, if this lookup fails, for example, you look up something in there that's not there, you're gonna get an error. But before you get an error, it first checks the prototype of the object to see if that B exists there. Now, what's the prototype? Every object in JavaScript has a prototype. It's a reference to another object which will be used as a fallback mechanism. When the JavaScript engine starts executing, when it starts up, it creates a single object, the singleton object, and it's called the prototype of object, the object prototype. And that's the prototype that all objects will eventually inherit. Objects in JavaScript don't specifically have a particular type, but when you instantiate one, when you create an object, when one pops into existence, you have the ability of specifying a prototype, which is just a reference to another object that gets used as a failback mechanism. And if you don't specify a prototype, the object we talked about before, that singleton, that object, that prototype of object gets used. It eventually chains back to that prototype of object. And the prototype of object is the object where all of the common functions that you see are defined, like has own property or is prototype of. Those are defined by the engine on that prototype object, and that's why every object in JavaScript has them. In strongly typed languages or non-dynamic languages, you can't just add members onto an object that they weren't there in the class. So the only way to get around having to rebuild everything from the ground up every time you know you might want to modify some existing object that someone else wrote is through inheritance. You create a new object and you inherit the one that you're trying to change the function of and you get to decide which functions are visible and which ones use the original implementation. Now this is the same as JavaScript because in theory if you look up a name and it's there then that's you implemented it and if you look up a name and it's not there and it uses the prototype that's it using the base class in conventional inheritance but that's where it ends. In conventional inheritance you have access modifiers. When I write an object I can decide which parts are internal to that object and which parts actually are callable by other people. If I'm writing something really important like hardware optimization code I don't want people calling into pieces of that that might that might create an inconsistent state in the program. I want clearly defined functions that other people can see and work off of and re-implement and create abstractions from. So that's the first place where it's radically different. Without access modifiers, all you're doing is just kind of reusing the, the object. And in JavaScript, you can use any member of any object, no matter who you are. You don't have to worry, there's no such thing as a private function in JavaScript, at least not in the version I'm talking about. So you don't have to inherit an object just to override things on it, you can just redefine that if you want to. Now that's dangerous, redefining functions on existing objects can be dangerous because other code may rely on what that is. All right, this is Discord, and Discord runs on JavaScript. So if I open up the JavaScript console here, and I redefine the... <laughs> if I redefine, if I go into the prototype of array, because array is a very common thing in JavaScript, and I redefine a really important function like slice, let's see what happens. Oh, well the UI's already gone to shit, and uh, it's not happy with that, and let's see what happens when I try to log in. Oh shit, the whole UI literally just rebuilt itself. Uh, let's just do that again, look at that. Look at amazing shit. If I just want to return, uh, let's return the number 8 from now on. Uh, oh, alright. <laughs> In classical OOP languages, people rely on access modifiers and code security to let them know which functions they should be calling versus which functions are irrelevant and possibly dangerous or, or, or could cause a crash if they call. So that's why access modifiers exist, to separate the internal part of the engine from the parts people are supposed to be touching and servicing. 
and inheritance plays a big part of that. If I have a class called HTTP client and I want to change some part of that or re-implement some part or add something to it, I have to make something called, you know, I don't know, better HTTP client. And I inherit the original and I leave all the parts that I like and anything I don't like, I write a new version of. But it's not just about code security, it's about polymorphism. When I take that better HTTP client and I put it into functions that are expecting a normal HTTP client, they don't know the difference. And they will call into functions that I've re-implemented, and that's where the extensibility comes in. If they really want to, they can test to see if the object is of the type they expect, and they can see that I've re-implemented it, and it's, it's a different type. It's derived from the one they expect, but they may choose not to call it, but they can, without fear that there's going to be the incorrect number of parameters, or the parameters aren't of the type they expect. Uh, oh. Because that's handled in a strongly typed language, and that's where inheritance becomes key. In JavaScript, anything can be anything anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal to say, oh yeah, and hey, if that doesn't exist, it's, it's over here too. I'm sure this is a very niche discussion that most of you probably didn't find too uh, appetizing, but uh, someone requested it, and I felt like making it, so there you go.